Let me begin with the next lecture is uh, lecture number six. And this lecture is called Nazi Racial Ideology and the Jewish Question. Let's go back to July 20th, 1934. It was a plot to kill Hitler, to blow him up. It failed. The perpetrators were executed. And many were also arrested. November 8th to 9th, 1938, Kristallnacht, the night of the broken glass. The ones in this plot to riot against the Jews throughout all of Germany realize at this point what the real intentions of the Nazis was. Kristallnacht becomes a defining moment, a turning point in the Holocaust. Many scholars look at it as the beginning of the end of European Jewry as we knew it. Originally, the answer to what the Nazis called, quote-unquote, the Jewish question, the Jewish problem, was to expel the Jews from Germany to a place of their own. Anti-Semitism was one of the responses to this question, but South America and Canada were first considered as a place to expel the Jews to. This was the attitude of the Germans at first. The anti-Nazis within the German society, the Nazi party. The Nazi party itself saw the Jewish problem differently and said the Jews had to be exterminated, eliminated from European society. At the end of the 19th century, European society had been divided on this. They left it to Jesus, they said. That religion, the Messiah, would do away with the Jews eventually, who were non-believers in Jesus anyway. They saw the Jews as something that should not be. The Jewish persecution in Germany in 1933 to 1939, leading up to the Holocaust, the Kristallnacht, the Nazis had to sell their ideology to ordinary people within Germany. The ordinary citizen, as I said in an earlier lecture, needed a simple explanation for all the woes that were occurring in his life, in his country. And it was easy to take an ideology such as this and blame the Jews. Made it plain and simple for the simple person, the everyday person. All the problems in your society are caused by the dirty Jew. If the Jewish issue can be connected to ordinary man's woes, his unemployment, his economic problems, then the everyday common man, citizen, will buy into that. So the Nazi ideology was, connect, ideology was connecting the two. In 1935, this ideology becomes law with the legislation, the passing of the Nuremberg Laws, and now becomes legal to hate Jews. They are stripped of all their citizenship rights. They're no longer citizens of the state. So-called experts in the field of anthropology of race and so on claim, then, at that point, that there is a physical difference between Jews and Aryans. For example, the cranial measurements, that the, the size of their head, what they call the cranial index, was different. They decided what is an Aryan brain or an Aryan uh, head and what was not. Germany was at this point a decomposing corpse being eaten away by the Jews was the philosophy that they sold. Germany will not be able to continue to exist as long as the Jew is allowed to live. And so we see the Nazis beginning to use art as propaganda. Teaching you an awareness of this propaganda is very important because you can recognize how it works. You become more critical in your analysis of some of the documents that you'll see. And it also provides you with a valuable education as to the power of uh, propaganda. The Nazi policy was to predict 
a more pure world without the Jew through their art. Their art exhibitions were staged to create an image of an ideal Germany once the Jew was eliminated. Let's take a look at the steps leading up to World War II and some of the incidents in World War II as well. First of all, to understand the magnitude of World War II, there was an estimated 20 to 30 million deaths just in the USSR, Soviet Union. Among those deaths, there were 10 million soldiers, 3,600,000 Jews, 7 million regular citizens. In Poland, 6 million soldiers and civilians were killed. Half of them, 3 million, were Jews. Two out of every three European Jews was murdered. In Britain, the British lost 264,433 soldiers in the war and 61,000 civilians. The United States, our country here, lost 362,561 soldiers in World War II. Australia lost over 27,000. Gypsies in Europe lost 250,000. Germany lost 3 million 600,000 soldiers, 3,250,000 civilians. 250,000 were of their own people were gassed through the T4 euthanasia program, people who were considered um, um, handicapped mentally or physically, were put to death by doctors in order to purify the race. The estimate is that between 40 to 60 million people lost their lives, most of them civilians, in World War II. Do an interesting thing. Go to a bookstore. Look at the books about World War II. Look on the index. Look under H for Holocaust. Look under J for Jew. And see how much, or should I say, see how little is covered about the Holocaust in these books about World War II. But the Holocaust was a major defining event within the backdrop of World War II. An excellent book that deals with it within the context of World War II was written by Sir Martin Gilbert, a very famous Holocaust historian and author who's written a fantastic book on Crystal Nock, the uh, uh, Holocaust Atlas, and many other books. And Martin Gilbert wrote a book called The Second World War. I'm not going to tell you I read it. I haven't. But from what I have read about it, it's the most definitive book on World War II because it also addresses the Shoah. It's important for you as you learn about the Shoah, and that's why I have a guest speaker come in such as, you know, Professor Carl Kreisman, because he's more of an expert on World War II. So you understand that it was a backdrop to the Holocaust. During World War II, the Germans came up with an idea called Liebensborn. Women were checked for their racial purity. And then once they were checked to ha that they were pure, they were forced to have sex with pure German officers to produce pure Aryan babies for the Führer, for Germany, for Hitler. We need to look at the stages of World War II to understand how it unfolds as a backdrop to the Holocaust. But that's going to take more than the couple of minutes I have left in this video to do, uh, because we really need to see that as a separate lecture of its own. And what I'm going to say is only going to be uh, cutting through the surface of the iceberg as um, I talk about the stages of World War II, when you have your guest lecturer come into class, you'll get a much deeper understanding and picture of World War II, what was happening in the background of the Holocaust. It's important to recognize both events, the Holocaust, but also the World War that was taking place at the same exact time. So with that... Uh, I'm going to uh, sign off.
until the next lecture.